Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. This week we're going to do something a little bit different and get ourselves onto the metal lathe. So let's get going. Now I've noticed a lot of comments in the comment section asking what these two machines are. Matt, why the hell have you got metal working machines in your workshop? As a lot of you know, I started Turning Tuesday or wood turning as a way to expand my skills and just learn something new. And I kind of took that a little bit further than I expected and I ended up investing in these. Now, Turning Tuesday, it's called Turning Tuesday, it's not called Wood Turning Tuesday, so I thought it would be quite fun to try and make something on the metal lathe today. So I've just been having a little play with this before I started the video, although I haven't, I've never actually cut anything on this. I've just been moving dials and just seeing how stuff works. This thing is so cool and I can't wait to start learning how to use it. Like you got things where you press the start button, get this spinning, and then if I move a little thing down here, it starts auto feeding the carriage to the left, or I can move it up like that, and then it starts Where's that going? It's moving the carriage forwards and backwards. Ah, oh, I cannot wait to get doing stuff on this. Now the actual project I'm gonna make on the lathe today, I'm gonna to keep a secret. I'm, I might have said it in a previous video, I can't remember. I've had intentions to make this thing for quite a while now and yeah, I'm sure I've said something about it. But what I can show you is the dimensions and the overall shape of what I'm going for. What I'm gonna try and make is a little thing that kind of looks like damn pen. Much better. Much, much better. <laughs> this is what I need to make. And to give you a scale of how big it is, this section here is going to be 20 millimeters. This section here is going to be 15 millimeters. And then the thread is going to stop five millimeters shy of that 20 millimeter section. That thread doesn't necessarily have to have a proper pitch to it. It's not, it doesn't have to be an M6, an M8 or anything like that. It just has to be a coarse thread of some kind. And the actual diameter of the piece needs to be about nine millimeters. And this section has to be, I don't know, six, let's say. But as I said, it doesn't have to be an M6 thread necessarily. So what I've got in the lathe is a piece of 10 millimeter 303 stainless steel, which is what the website I bought it from recommended for general use. Apparently it's pretty easy to machine, takes an all right finish. I don't really know these things at this point. I'm just going by their word. <laughs> That's what I'm using today. So I've been watching quite a lot of videos by this old Tony. Those of you who haven't seen him, he does metal working videos on the milling machine lathe and he is absolutely hilarious. You don't have to be into engineering to watch his videos. He's so entertaining to watch. Um, but I have invested in tungsten tipped tooling as opposed to high speed steel because it lasts a bit longer. As with woodworking, tungsten tips last longer but you don't get as good of a finish from it. Apparently it's exactly the same case for metal as well. So I'm gonna use this little jobby and see if we can take that down to nine millimeters. Okay, so I think I'm a little bit shy of it at the moment. What I might do actually is just move this back into the chuck a little bit so that it's not gonna deflect as much. I wanna get as much strength in this as possible. So as fun as metal work seems, unfortunately, it involves a little bit of math. Now the video I watched, he recommended using 40 surface feet per minute, or sorry, cutting at a speed of 40 surface feet per minute. These apparently are quite conservative numbers, they're quite low, but as a beginner, that means you're less likely to damage your tools, they're meant to last a bit longer. Yes, the process is a bit slower, but given the fact I've never done this before and I will largely be self-teaching myself, I would rather go for the lower, safer numbers at the current time. Now unfortunately, surface feet per minute doesn't translate into RPM. Now the conversion from this into RPM, taking the diameter of the piece into account is pretty simple if you're working in Imperial. But because of my belligerence towards Imperial, I'm gonna work it out in metric because I'm just difficult like that. So I need 40 surface feet per minute. I've already written it, Never mind. The calculation is RPM equals 1000 times the meters per minute over pi. <laughs> 
Oh, I promised my maths teacher that I would never do this again. Times diameter. Ugh, that just hurts to think about. <laughs> and so to get the meters per minute that I need for stainless steel, then I need to do a conversion of 40 surface feet per minute divided by 3.3 equals the meters per minute. So 40 divided by 3.3, just add a little calculation, is about 12. You round it to the nearest number to make it easier, which means that the RPM I need on the lathe is 1,000 times 12. So we got 12,000 over, oops, pi times the diameter of the piece. So let's get the old calculator out. Well, this is far more challenging than wood turning already. Where even is pi on this? Pi, pi, I'm getting hungry. Pi, pi times the diameter of the piece, which is 10 equals 31.41. Let's just round it to two decimal places. Then apparently if I divide 12,000 by 31.41, I should get the RPM of the lathe. 12,000 divided by 31.41 equals Bang, 382. So we will set the lathe to the nearest that I can get to 382, which is probably gonna be 380. Now, one thing I did discover on this lathe is there is two movements for the x-axis, and I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between them, other than the fact one of them seems to give a finer feed rate, and the other one is more of a quicker feed rate. So I'll just demonstrate that now. If I flick this up, no, that's the forwards and backwards. If I flick this down, then this wheel starts spinning very slowly and that carriage is moving across to the left. Whereas if I then flick that up to zero, so it's not moving anymore, and then flick this one sideways, then it also starts moving to the left, but it's at a much quicker rate. Not entirely sure what the difference is between them. So if anyone's able to clarify that because I can actually find it in the instructions or on the Sieg website or anything like that. If I flick that one down, it's a pretty slow feed rate. And if I flick that one to the right, then it starts speeding up the feed rate. But either way, it, they both move the carriage to the left. So I think I've done enough talking now. Let's do the first pass. Okay, so when I took that first pass, I made sure that I zeroed this onto zero. So I know that that is exactly where I started. And now anything I take off after that, I will be able to measure off here. I assume that's how it works anyway. I mean, yeah, it's an okay finish. I'm definitely cutting, which is nice. Let's measure where we're at and we can do some more maths. Oh boy. I'm not necessarily annoyed at the fact that I have to do maths. I'm just more annoyed at the fact that my teacher was right when she said that I might have to use pi <laughs> at some point in the future. I was always saying this, we don't have to use this. Like, why are we even bothering? Just use a calculator. Yes, I can use a calculator, but she was still right when she said that I might need to use pi. That's the most annoying thing about this. Kids, don't forget to listen to your teachers at school. See, this is currently at 9.796 by the looks of it. So I'm gonna take it down to 9.5 to begin with, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room because the project doesn't necessarily have to be nine millimeters exactly. If anything, it might have to be a little bit bigger, but we'll see. And I've just realized I should probably take the cut first, then zero it, then measure it. Yeah, that would make sense. And then I know exactly how much to take off because at the moment I'm just having to, now I've moved this, I'm just having to offset Wow, this is difficult. This is really difficult. <laughs> okay, so I need to do another cut, then measure it, then zero it to that. Then I know exactly where I am. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm trying out the slow speed rate at the moment just to see what the difference is. Right, so it's just finished cutting. So now I zero it. So I know where I am without moving the handle. There we go. Then I can back that away, <laughs> back to the start. And then if I move that back to zero now, oh, overshot it, back to zero. That should be the exact diameter of the piece I've just done. I turned it the wrong way. That should be, it should be the zero there. That's exactly where it is. So now, I measure it. It's a much better finish going on that slow speed though. Oh, it's down at 9.3 now. <laughs> okay, I went a bit too far there. I am going to try and take this down to 9.3 exactly, just as good practice for my mathematics skills, seeing as I haven't had to do them for like 
Oh Lord, eight years. So if I want to take this down to 9.3, then I need to take off 0 0.07 millimeters. And each stop on here represents 0 0.02 millimeters. So if I do one, two, three, that should be 0 0.6 millimeters plus another half. That should be where I want to be. Let's take a pass and find out. the moment of truth 9.2 what how have i taken off that much okay either that scale isn't right or ah uh, there might have been some backlash in the thread i didn't take into account backlash that's probably it oh well we'll stick with that that's pretty close so i now need to face off the end of this to get it nice and smooth and get rid of that tab of metal on the bottom there because we don't want that there. So I'm going to use the same cutter for this. I'm pretty sure you can do that. And now we'll start auto feeding the forwards and backwards travel on this. Okay, and then zero that. Okay, so now with both of these at zero, that should be directly on the corner of the bit of metal. So I now need to get this down to six millimeters in diameter with a 15 millimeter length. So now on this cross feed, 0 0.5 millimeters is the distance between each of these increments. So if I do that up to 10, that should move five millimeters in theory. So if I do it to 30, that should give me my 15 millimeters. Let's test that theory, shall we? So I'll make sure there's no backlash in it and wind it up to zero. There we go, that should be on the corner. Okay, diameter of this, 6.9. We've got just under a millimeter to take off. So let's do that. That should be six mil now. <laughs> it should be six mil. Come on, be nice, be nice. It's about 6.1 at the moment. Let's take a little skim more. So I should only have to move this around five stops now. To there, and that should be our six mil. Damn it, I've made it 5.8. <laughs> 5.8 will do. Okay, so now to create that thread, I want to stop it to be about five millimeters shy of this shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is cut a little gutter in here, just basically a small channel so that when I engage the auto feed on the lathe, it threads this entire area here and then it goes into empty space here, which gives me a little window of opportunity to turn off the feed before it starts hitting that shoulder and well, I guess it wouldn't be too good for the machine if that happened. So I'm gonna swap this bit into a V-shaped tool in order to do that. And I'll also chamfer the end with it just so that edge isn't as brutal as it is at the moment. Hello. Hey. Hello. Yeah, watch the video. No. I don't want to ruin Game of Thrones for myself. Okay, so I was just toying around with changing the angle of the top slide and I don't think I've got the right tool to angle this at the 30 degrees in order to cut the thread in a more efficient way. This again was a tip in a video by this old Tony, but I do remember him saying that it's not necessary for smaller threads. So what I'll do is just put this back at zero and then use my standard thread cutting tool to cut the thread instead, advancing the tool perpendicular into the workpiece as opposed to at 30 degrees. And given the smaller diameter, it should be okay. So I'm not entirely sure what ratio or speed that the cross slide is traveling at at the moment when I advance it automatically. I'm hoping that it's fast enough to create a thread on here. As I said, I don't mind what sort of thread it is. I just want to make some sort of thread looking thing on there and just practice that motion of moving it forwards and backwards on the cross slide without changing the location of where that screw is being cut. Okay, cool. So now I've done that, it's at about 5.1 at the moment, which will be fine. 
Let's leave it as that. Now I'm gonna part this off and we'll have a look at what we got. Yeah, you can see that thread is very, um, it's not much of a thread, but it was certainly good practice in getting that carriage movement. So this last bit, we're aiming to get to be 20 millimeters long. So if I push this up against it, just get it to touch and then zero the hand wheel underneath. If I move the hand wheel, one, that should be five, 10, 15, 20. Plus, oh, I've got the size of the bit as well, which is probably about three millimeters. 0 0.5, one, 1.5, two, 2.5, three. It should be where we want to part it. Okay, get this cleaned up with a file. And the question is, does that five millimeter section fit into a bit of wood? Cool, a little bit snug for my liking, but that will certainly do. God, I don't know how I'm gonna get that out. Right, and there we go. I think that is where we'll call it for Turning Tuesday this week. I know that probably wasn't the most exciting episode to watch, but this series is about me learning different skills and just trying new things to try and stop me from doing general woodwork, joinery, day in, day out. I just like to challenge myself in different ways. So this was one of them. It's definitely not as accurate as I want it to be. However, I'm gonna go back and try another one off camera and just sort of get my head around some of the things that went wrong in this. This is a prototype for something that will become more obvious in the future. I don't wanna to say too much at this point because I don't want to commit to anything, but this is a prototype. It may or may not go into CNC production. I don't know at this point. I might even be saying too much now, but this rather boring looking thing has exciting possibilities behind it. So keep an eye out. In the coming months, you may be able to piece a few bits together and work out what this is for, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.